Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to discuss the actual cost of building your own NAS and in this video I'm going to be comparing buying one of these devices here on the table and a couple of other NASs versus the cost of building this sort of thing yourself. How much cheaper is it? Is it cheaper at all? And is it worth it in the long run? So what I'm going to do is hop over to my laptop. I'm going to guide you through exactly what it takes to buy and build one of these devices for yourself. And then at the end, we're going to do some calculations and work out if it was really worth the hassle or are you saving yourself a decent bit of quid? Let's go. Okay, so before we go any further, it's worth remembering that building your own server versus buying turnkey solutions, that is, instant setup devices like Synology, QNAP, Asus Door, and TerraMaster, is more than just about the money. Yes, an enormous focus of today's video is going to be about the difference in value and the difference in spending, and for a lot of you, how much money you could save, but it's worth remembering when you are buying a turnkey solution, you are buying it because it's turnkey. You're buying it almost service-led and one of the biggest reasons that people go for turnkey solutions like Synology, QNAP, Asus, or TerraMaster is that they are combined hardware software solutions and although when you are buying it um, either as a whole or you're trying to build your own NAS the hardware is what you're paying for it should be highlighted that on NASs and turnkey solutions the software factors into that pricing, something I will cover in greater detail later on. Also, if you just want a breakdown analysis of the spending at the end of this video, I'm going to be going through a lot of information there on screen. And if you look at the time bar on the bottom, you can probably skip ahead. But throughout the course of this video, I'm going to show you three different methodologies uh, about buy, um, kind of setting up your own NAS system DIY style, and then we're going to compare them against NASes. So, Straight away, the NASs we're going to be looking at in the first stage of this are going to be these. The DS923, the TS464, the TerraMaster F4423, and the Acer Store Locker Store 4 Gen 2. We're going for these because they're very similar architecture. They're four bay NASs. They knock around for about, I don't know, 500, 550 NICA, depending on where you shop around. So you're talking about half a grand. And all of these have got... 4 gig of memory, they've got a very competent processor, slightly different with the Synology arriving with the embedded Ryzen processor, uh, the other three devices all arriving with an Intel N5105 or N05095, um, they've, you know, with the exception of the Synology, they've all got 2.5 GPE, they've got support of up to 16 gig of memory, they're all four bays, you know, that's really what we're focusing in on, so... We're using those four as our template. And remember, if you're going to go DIY throughout the course of this, if you go DIY for your solution to build it from scratch, you're still going to need NAS software. And although there are a lot of different options out there, the two that have bubbled to the surface have been true NAS, the ZFS platform, that's going to be important later, and Unraid, far, far more... Um, resource friendly doesn't use anywhere near as much uh, hardware resources as the likes of TrueNAS or even ext4 systems but at the same time it's a lot more license led the software itself is free and uh, much like um TrueNAS, which is a lot more complex but you have to buy individual licenses for your storage as you scale up there so we're not going to break down into the cost of those but if you do want to learn more about the difference between, say, QTS and DSM from Synology and QNAP versus TrueNAS and Unraid and stuff, I have made several videos on that that should be linked in the description. But <clears throat> let's start super budget. And for that, we're going to go to AliExpress. AliExpress, you can get super cheap components, and we're going to set about building ourselves a network attached storage device here. So we're going to focus on that M5105 processor there. The reason being is that's the one that we've got in three out of four of those NASes, and it allows us to stay relative to cost. We're not just going to see how much we can get for £500, because we still have to factor in the cost of the software and the service there. So looking up that CPU on AliExpress, there's lots of different options. There's traditionally known as an NUC or NUC, uh, which is a small compact computer, right the way down to motherboards that already have the CPU uh, attached 
attached there. So we're going to examine two of those, both of those options. But uh, in this first instance, we're going to look at motherboards that have got that CPU already on board. Now there were several options open. Some of them with multiple uh, Ethernet ports there. Some of which, even though this one had uh, six 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, this one didn't include uh, memory, and in some cases didn't support M2 NVMe or add-on non-SATA storage, something that will become very important later on. On the other hand, here was another one. Again, this was uh, utilizing four Ethernet ports there. And again, you could get it, and it was 123 NICA there. But the one that stood out for me was this one. For £154, you could get yourself either the no RAM, no storage version, or you could go ahead and get one that's got the M2 NVMe and the sodium connected in there all in a bundle so again we'll come back to that later on because we'll go into the checkout at the end but that's the motherboard i ended up going for there next up you're going to need memory because again you're going to need memory to run this system and you could go you know for the minimum if you want to match their four gig of memory there and again normally i would try to match the other uh, the synology qnap terramaster acer door as much as possible however i think most users that are diy in their system are going true nas and true nas if you run with anything less than 16 gig is not going to give you all of the features and services such as inline data deduplication and inline data compaction and compression are things that are either limited or completely unavailable without 16 gig of memory so we've got to go minimum 16 gig uh, next up cases i looked at lots of different cases and as again there's an eight bay case there which was too big we were looking at this case here this is a six bay a lot more compact and uh, kind of relatable there and then finally i came across this a four bay chassis very compact there good for airflow room for an um a mini or micro atx um, itx motherboard there room for the psu room for the ports to me that was um perfect we could have gone bigger but again, for now, while we're living on here, we're trying to cut corners in terms of cost and replicate the hardware experience of those NASs at the beginning. This is the one I went for. Again, they just got more diverse and then they got uglier with less ventilation. So I ignored ones like that just to give you a sense of relativity. And there was even ones that were quite comparable to that of QNAP cases readily available. Now, next up, you're going to need your power supply. And this was something that a number of users, myself included, completely forgot in previous coverage. And that is, when you DIY it yourself, most of the time, you've got to go internal PSU. Most of these masses here have got external power bricks. This allows the system to be even smaller, more dedicated in airflow and lower the internal temperature. And also, you can replace the PSUs easily. Whereas, most of the DIY systems I was trying to spec up had internal PSU requirements there, and that's what I went for. So I tried to go for a PSU that gave me at least 250 to 350 watts. Um, and again, there were several options there, sort of shopped through and went for those. And then finally, we started looking at, after that, SATA cables. It's a silly thing, but you will need to buy SATA cables to connect each of those individual drives there. Because although they are, the trays are included in a lot of those uh, by uh, enclosures, those don't immediately. They slot in to have either no um, connections at all or a default MUX board that's not going anywhere, not MUX, a standard controller board. Again, I found cables relatively cheap, but to buy them in bulk, uh, you have to pay a bit more. Ones like this, when they were on promo for like 8p, um, you could only get one unit at that price. Finally, an M2 NVMe drive. Now, it doesn't have to be NVMe, depending on your motherboard. However, whether you are using Unraid, whether you are using uh, TrueNAS, or any of these softwares, they have to live off an OS. They have to live on a disk inside the system. In the case of all of these devices mentioned here, all of these arrive with an additional little module inside. That extra module that's inside these systems, um, that is where the operating system lives when you initialize. Then it installs it on the hard drives as per ext4 and as you can see there's a four gig module there now you can't get four gig modules and some devices you can like unraid can run off a usb drive let's find our uh, tab again however unraid might run off a usb drive but true nas won't it needs a proper os disk and it's re recommended an ssd and given the number of bays available on most of those slots and we're going to be utilizing the sata i went with some super 
budget 120 gig um, m2 nvme's there these are not high performance not high speed but there'll be more than enough really for those of you that are just going to run the light os off of it so that was enough for aliexpress there and with going by all the parts that i went for it came to this it came to 343 pounds now uh, bear in mind that although it says shipping fee there that is approximate and depending on where you are in the world it will differ on top of that so it's going to be around that figure secondly it does not factor in local tax it does not factor in regional taxes import export depending on where you are in the world and whether it's paid for on either side or if you can pay in advance it doesn't factor any of that in but again we spent 1288 on an ssd 59 um, pence on individual sata cables there 40 pounds on the psu 48 pounds 98 pence on the case and 222 pounds for the uh, motherboard uh onboard memory there and the whole combination makeup there so again around about 300 odd spend there not too shabby so again if we make our way back we can see what if because i'm sure a number of you in the comments are wondering I don't want to build a PC, but I don't want to go turnkey. Why not, why not I just buy an Intel Nook and, you know, slam some storage on that? Well, let's have a look. Okay, so let's go that little Nook method there, the little tiny mini PC. And again, if we try to get the DS923, it's knocking around down there for about $580. If we try and go for the QNAP, that's knocking around for $573. If we try and go for the Terramaster, the F4423, that's $515. And finally, the Acer Store there is knocking for $589 at the time of recording. So, let's start off. First thing we want to look at is what was the right kind of box we were going for there. And as you can see, there was loads of options there. I wasn't bothered about whether it came with Windows or not, but most of them, you didn't have much choice. I just knew I'd had to go for a system that's got at least 16 gig of memory and that same CPU to be comparable there. Next, we'd have to need storage because those little uh, boxes there do not have an abundance of storage. You're going to need a means to bolt on some storage. So rather than go for a hardware ray, um, I went ahead with the Arico 4 bay box there that allowed us to have four SATA bays delivered to the system and therefore giving you a, a storage, but you'd have to manage the raid from within that Intel system there. Again, we can look at it there, just $189 for that. And again, we could have gone the ATX motherboard method here, uh, utilizing Amazon, but none of the options I saw there gave us the ability to buy that CPU board combination. And again, as we move forward, that's the Nook we decided to go for, for $259. We make our way forward. We even considered, myself and Eddie, while looking at this, to go for this device here, which was an M5105 kind of mini rack mount PC. But there were so many things that made this very difficult to work around with. It has no system, plus it costs more than the Nook thing we saw, and we'd still need that storage. But overall, the total came to $448. That's right, you're paying you know noticeably more than DIYing it yourself to buy two devices that are at least relative to what we saw there on AliExpress quite turnkey in their nature and what we're going for is slightly less turnkey for those so again you were definitely saving more money when you were going for the AliExpress method but a number of you I'm sure in the comments are wanting to say to me well, the reason I'm going DIY isn't because I want to replicate the boring four bay, you know, micro low efficiency methodology of a NAS. I want to go big. The whole reason for this is I want to, you know, go for a nice aggressive PC builder specs there. So why not? How about we see what it would cost to build the QNAP TVS H874, an Intel Core 12th gen system? All right, let's crack on with that. So the QNAP TVS H874 is kind of their big powerhousey desktop unit at the moment. And right now it's selling ridiculously well insofar as finding it in stock in places is really hard going. There's an i9 version out there, there's an i7 version out there, very hard to come by. But luckily the i5 for the basis of our comparison does still exist and it's knocking around for $1,737. That is a lot of money. So, if we carry on moving forward, we can have a little look at how these things shape up. So, 
First and foremost, we're looking at an 8 bay case. I went ahead and uh, sort of going through and sort of sorting out cases there and found quite a nice QNAP looking case there, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Next up, there was, uh, after the case, where are we going to do about the PSU? Because this system does not arrive with a power supply unit. It doesn't come with the processor or anything. So once again, we've got to build it up. So next up was that precise CPU there. And as you can see, you can get that CPU for $182 there. If we move along from $182, we can make our way to get a CPU fan. Because that's right, we're going to need a fan for that CPU. So I went ahead and gone for modest but good enough. But just bear in mind, this is going to be a 24-7 system. And then from there, started looking at motherboards to put that CPU into. Because although there were bundles for that CPU, the majority of them either weren't available or were bundled with motherboards that were just way, way, way outside of a similar price bracket there. So in the end, I ended up going for this Micro ATX Gigabyte. Um, and again, this doesn't have the CPU, it's just the bare board. So we're going to have to go shopping for our components again. So again, 16 gig of memory for that, um, supported on there, 16 gig, because that, uh, two 16 gig, sorry, because the original here you can see is priced up with 32 gig of memory. And I went for the Silicon Power Value Gaming RAM there, $64 for those. Moving forward, we're going to need that boot drive again. So I went ahead and ordered a try or added to my basket 120 gig transcend SSD. And then from there, we need the SATA cable. So I got a pack of six uh, and a pack of three SATA cables there. Then we need the 2.5 GBE LAN port because remember that motherboard is not designed as a NAS motherboard, it's only got one Ethernet port. So I had to get a 2.5 GBE 2 port card. Moving forward, we need that PSU. It's got to be minimum 5550 PSU. Um, so we went ahead, I believe, with the dagger. And there is our total. It came to eight, um, $830. Which, again, bear in mind, that QNAP was $1,700 there. So at least in terms of hardware, we're making something of a saving. So why don't we summarize all of these numbers and see what we can equate from that. So in order to work out just the kind of money we've either saved or not, we have to work it all out in dollars. Luckily, AliExpress was the only one that we weren't running in dollars. And now we've converted those costs back over to dollars there. We can see that it's come to $401.97. We're not going to worry about the cents. We're just going to round down on that one. It's also worth highlighting. Don't worry about that saying the M2 NVMe there included at the bottom. It hasn't actually checked it. I've gone in. It's fine. So after that, we can run through all of the numbers together. So it's a that so first and foremost that was our specifications we were looking at there and if we scroll down we're able to see the first round and the second round indeed of that testing so again it came to 401 dollars for the aliexpress super budget methodology and with that we would have saved 179 dollars on the synology 172 dollars on the qnap 188 dollars on the asus store and 114 dollars there on the terra master now, when it came to the getting the NUC, the little box, Intel or otherwise, um, connected with a JBOD DAS 4 bay, we could see it was $132 saving, $125 saving, $141 saving, and $67 saving on Synology QNAP, Asador, and TerraMaster, respectively there. However, remember this. Of course, it is a saving. It's clearly cheaper to buy that hardware and build it yourself. But build it yourself has to be the key word there. Now, it'd be very easy for a number of us to say, oh, my time doesn't cost me anything, which, you know, you might be slacking yourself off there. But more, um, as you can see at the bottom there, I worked out the TCO, total cost of ownership, time investment and maintenance concerns that you're going to need to factor in. First and foremost, more warranties. Now, this is less appropriate here on the Amazon uh, NUC and JBOD. But when it comes to this one, the amount of time and hassle you may go through when having to deal with multiple warranties will be extraordinary because bear in mind that was just scratching the surface there of the components you're going to need to go for. This isn't me trying to talk you out of it. This is me just giving you a heads up before you go down the DIY route that it's not without extra hassle and that money you're saving it depends on how much your time is worth and that's going to become even more prescient because to maintain and monitor your system, not just, you know, 
getting Unraid on a USB, sticking it in, formatting, install it on a drive, setting up the device, setting up uh, your individual jails and your little uh, containers of storage, but maintaining the system, learning ZFS, because I think a lot of users overlook that DSM, QTS and stuff like that, they're designed to make things a lot easier for you. They are so much more chewable and user friendly. Yes, they can feel limiting sometimes. And yes, they can seem sometimes be a bit flashy, while at the same time not giving you the full control and configuration of ZFS sometimes. But those platforms have got loads of mobile apps. They've got loads of desktop clients. They are smooth. They've got their own remote access services and connections with third party apps as well. And you don't get that with the majority of that third party software out there so just know that because of the absence of a lot of those tools you're either going to have to spend time learning or if you've already got that knowledge have to apply it in time and energy not only building and putting the device together but connecting all of your devices around your home or business environment and then there's compatibility after that building and setup and more because all of the components i've gone through there have been a cursory check half an hour of searching on my part you may find that there's incompatibilities the incorrect current connectors on a particular psu to go with your motherboard it may be that you can't use certain cards it may be that the psu needs a certain socket fit for a motherboard that you're not going to go for now of course, things are a lot easier to build your own PC these days, but they're certainly not easy peasy lemon squeezy, and there's a good chance that you will have to face errors of compatibility, or at least spend more time double checking that compatibility, which is when this money you're saving really starts to depreciate there, because it comes down to how much your time is worth. Finally, software. I just touched on it there talking about the whole business of uh, usability and the ease of usage but i think it also doesn't um you know cover enough to talk about the support the warranties give you so at the moment if you've got an issue with third-party software you are kind of reluctantly stuck with community support whereas buying us a solution that has you know either a virtually limitless software support in one shape or form depending on the lifespan of the product and that hardware warranty included in there will ease a lot of headaches with regards to setting the device up first time and remember we're talking about savings here of yes between 114 and 179 dollars based on that do it yourself and as little as $67, which really tells you how much uh, TerraMaster is, you know, cutting down costs there, um, versus $132 of support, of warranty, of ease of use, of loads of applications, and just a general, more user-friendly, easy setup there. Now, it's down to you what you spend, but moving forward, why don't we talk a little bit about that QNAP comparison, because we saw some serious savings there, didn't we? How about when you're building that 874? So again, we needed a few extra components when putting that together for that i5 12th gen setup, but again, as we saw, and again, remember, none of those prices have got tax or shipping and stuff like that factored in precise to your area, but that was when we saw a huge saving of $907 surely that's a compelling argument for some of you that going diy could save you real money the higher you scale up your system and it's true when you come to any kind of nas server you do find that the more powerful the nas server in terms of cpu memory and general architecture and network connection the kind of the gap there on top gets bigger that disparity between diy and non-diy gets bigger on the turnkey solutions that have got particularly powerful hardware compared to buying all the components yourself now there's a couple of reasons for that first and foremost when you are diying it once again everything we mentioned so far the build time the warranty the compatibility the um, and the uh, uh suitability of all the components the warranty and stuff like that all of those things play their part however these more enterprise, big, enormous solutions have got to be designed to be on 24-7. They've got to be designed uh, for business use. They've also generally arrived between three and five years of manufacturer-supported warranty. The software is designed to last on there for considerably longer than smaller systems. And overall, the reason they cost more is these are designed for bigger businesses who err towards turnkey. They don't go for DIY they don't go for true NAS they don't go for Unraid yes you can you know build service for yourself and then let out server space and hosting to others sure if you know what you're doing 
but a lot of big businesses, even medium, even small businesses, particularly those that don't want to spend time learning a new whole area of technology, they're not the people that are going to want to go out of their way to build an as and maintain an as. And particularly when you reach this scale of storage, the less efficient you are being, the more power is being consumed, and ultimately the more it may cost you in the long run to not have an efficient build. This is not me forgiving the QNAT difference there. What I'm saying is with that price difference, you've got to factor in the software cost, the utilities, and the end user it is designed for. Four. You don't look at a Ferrari and say, my God, that Ferrari costs a lot of money. I only want to go down the shop and back, but I still want that engine. It doesn't work out that way. And I know a lot of you are going to correct me on the car terminology there. I don't drive. It was a terrible simile. But this has been the difference in cost and hopefully understanding between building your own NAS and buying a turnkey NAS solution from Synology QNAP, Asus Thought and Terramaster. I'm not saying that turnkey solutions like those branded ones are perfect. They are definitely not. And there are numerous instances where a DIY server, particularly with ZFS, and particularly during good offer periods, works out better for some users out there as a NAS server than turnkey solutions. I've mentioned it there at the bottom. If you're a home user, a non-business user, or um, you know, uh, a very inexperienced, there we go, experienced in true NAS and PC buildings, then go for a turnkey solution. Because if you go for uh, kind of do it yourself and you don't know what you're doing, not only do you potentially lose all of that money you've just spent, but the time and headaches you're going to have is just later on going to make you think, I should have just got something easy and user friendly. And then you doubled down on the time, the loss, and still went turnkey. Final thing if you need any help setting up your solution, be it to build your own server or to still debate whether to go DIY or go for a turnkey, go to NAS Compares, link to the description, go to this button here on the right and get free advice from me and Eddie. We link to other resources there, but if none of those can help you, you can contact us for free advice. It can take us a little while to reply to your uh, queries because it gets real busy down there, but we do respond to everyone. Alternatively, ask the NAS community the question on NAS, um, Ask NAS Compares there on the channel. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know what you guys think in the co comments. I'm sure a lot of you are going to disagree, but let me know down there nonetheless, and I'll see you next time.